What happens when obsession turns deadly? The Jody Arias case is one of the most sensationalized trials of our time, marked by betrayal, jealousy, and a shocking crime that captured the nation's attention. But was this a story of self-defense, as Arias claimed, or something much darker? Let's dive deep into the disturbing details of a murder still haunts true crime enthusiasts to this day. In September 2006, at a business convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, Jody Arias met Travis Alexander. From the moment they crossed paths, there was an undeniable connection. Alexander, a charismatic and successful salesman, was deeply committed to his Mormon faith, and Arias, captivated by him, soon converted to the religion in November of that same year. By early 2007, they were officially dating. But behind the scenes, things weren't as perfect as they seemed. Their relationship was volatile, marked by intense highs and bitter lows, with Arya's possessive and obsessive behavior quickly becoming apparent to those close to Alexander. By the summer of 2007, they broke up, but Arias wasn't ready to let go. Alexander, meanwhile, moved on and began dating other women, though he and Arias continued their toxic back-and-forth friendship. Travis often confided in friends, revealing his fear that Arias was stalking him. Despite these concerns, their connection, both emotional and physical, never fully severed. On Arias moved back to California, it seemed like a fresh start for both of them. But the communication never stopped, keeping them locked in a twisted bond that would only end in tragedy. On June 4, 2008, Alexander's life came to a brutal end. He was found murdered in his home in Mesa, Arizona, stabbed 27 times, his throat slit from ear to ear, and shot in the face. Crime was gruesome. A violent end that no one could have imagined for the outgoing and well-liked Alexander. Friends became worried when he missed a conference call and failed to show up for a trip to Cancun he had been eagerly anticipating. Originally, he had planned to take Arias, but by April, he decided to take another woman, Mimi Hall, instead. A decision that would fuel Arias' jealousy to a dangerous level. On June 9th, concerned friends entered Alexander's home and made the horrifying discovery. Blood was splattered across the walls, leading to his body in the shower. The scene was chilling, and the 911 call that followed implicated Arias almost immediately, describing her as the obsessive ex-girlfriend who wouldn't let Alexander move on. Investigators soon uncovered evidence that pointed directly to Arias. A damaged digital camera left at the scene which contained eerie photos of the couple in sexually suggestive poses taken on the very day of the murder. The last image of Alexander alive was taken at 5.29 p.m., showing him in the shower. Moments later, the camera accidentally captured a blurry, chill-in photo of a bleeding person, likely Alexander, during the attack. As investigators pieced together the timeline, Arias's actions became more suspicious. Despite overwhelming evidence, including a bloody palm print containing both Arya's and Alexander's DNA, she initially denied being in Mesa that day. She later changed her story, claiming she was there, but that they were attacked by two masked intruders. Her ever-shifting accounts only added to the public's fascination and horror, as the evidence stacked up against her. Phone records revealed that in the days following the murder, Arya's left voicemails on Alexander's phone, trying to create an alibi that painted her as a concerned ex rather than a cold-blooded killer. Further investigation uncovered a crucial piece of the puzzle. A gun reported stolen from Arias' grandparents' home in California just weeks before the murder. Prosecutors argued that Arias staged the burglary to secure a weapon, using it to carry out the premeditated killing of Alexander. It was a damning accusation that painted Arias not as a woman scorned, but as a methodical and dangerous individual who meticulously planned her action. The trial began in January 2013 and immediately became a media spectacle. Cameras captured every twist and turn, and the public couldn't get enough. Arias, now a household name, took the stand in her own defense, painting a picture of a tumultuous relationship where she claimed Alexander was emotionally and physically abusive. She insisted that she killed him in self-defense, the evidence told a different story. Friends of Alexander described him as kind and generous, while witnesses testified about Arias' obsessive behavior and relentless pursuit of him, even when it was clear he wanted to move on. Prosecution argued that Arias's 
jealousy and anger over Alexander's rejection, particularly after he chose to take another woman on the Cancun trip, drove her to commit the unthinkable. They painted a chilling image of a woman who couldn't bear to be replaced, who brought a gun and knife to Alexander's home with the intention of killing him. The defense tried to depict Arias as a traumatized woman fighting for her life, but the jury was not convinced. On May 8, 2013, after four months of grueling testimony, the jury reached a unanimous decision. Jody Arias was found guilty, first-degree murder. Yet even in the sentencing phase, the drama continued. Arias initially requested the death penalty, only to plead for her life days later, citing a desire to protect her family from the pain of her execution. She was placed on suicide watch shortly after the verdict, a sign of the emotional toll the trial had taken. Despite her plea, the jury could not reach a consensus on her punishment, resulting in a hung jury and postponing her fate. The decision of whether Arias would receive the death penalty, life in prison, or the possibility of parole after 25 years hung in the ballots, adding another layer of intrigue to an already sensational case. Ultimately, Arias was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, sealing her fate and ending one of the most watched trials in recent memory. The Jodi Arias case remains a haunting reminder of how love, obsession, and jealousy can intertwine in deadly ways. The case has sparked debates about mental health, the justice system, and the consequences of unchecked emotions. It's a tragic story of a man's life cut short, and a woman whose actions will forever be remembered as one of the most shocking crimes in modern history. Arias's bizarre courtroom behavior, from laughing and crying to her seemingly detached demeanor, led experts to diagnose her with borderline personality disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. But for many, these diagnoses only raise more questions. Was Arias truly a victim of her own mental struggles, or was she a master manipulator, crafting a story to fit her needs? In the end, the Jody Arias case is more than just a tale of murder. It's a dark exploration of human behavior, a chilling reminder of what can happen when love turns lethal. And as long as there are questions about that fateful day in June 2008, the story of Jody Arias and Travis Alexander will continue to captivate and disturb us all. And there you have it, the twisted and tragic tale of Jody Arias and Travis Alexander. If you found this deep dive into one of the most infamous trials in recent history compelling, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more true crime stories. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Was this a case of self-defense, or was it cold-blooded murder? Be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.